A Pelican at Blandings by P. G. Woodhouse Read by Martin Jarvis The summer day was drawing to a close, and dusk had fallen on Blandings Castle, shrouding from view the ancient battlements, and causing Lord Emsworth's supreme Berkshire sow, Empress of Blandings, to leave the open-air portion of her sty, and withdraw into the covered shed where she did her sleeping. A dedicated believer in the maxim of early to bed and early to rise, she always turned in at about this time. Only by getting its regular eight hours can a pig preserve that schoolgirl complexion. Deprived of her society, which he'd been enjoying since shortly after lunch, Clarence, ninth Earl of Emsworth, the seigneur of this favoured realm, pottered dreamily back to the house. He just pottered dreamily back to his favourite chair in the library when Beach, his butler, entered, bearing a laden tray. Your dinner, my lord. Uh, what? Dinner? Oh, of course, yes. <laughs> a dinner, quite. Always have it at this time, don't I? And recently been having it here, though I can't remember for what reason. Why am I having dinner in the library, Beach? I gathered that your lordship preferred not to share the meal in the dining room with Mr. Chesney. Uh, Mr. who? Uh, Mr. Howard Chesney, my lord. Uh, Mr. Frederick's friend from America. The puzzled frown that had begun to gather on Lord Emsworth's forehead vanished like breath off a looking-glass. Ah, yes, uh, Mr. Howard Chesney, to be sure. Yeah, Mr. Frederick's friend from America. Are they feeding him, do you know? Yes, my lord. Is he having his dinner? Mr. Chesney went to London by the afternoon train, my lord, planning, I understand, to return tomorrow. Oh, I see. Uh, so he'll probably dine there, at a restaurant or, or somewhere? Presumably, my lord. Uh, that stuff smells good, bitch. What is it? Leg of lamb, my lord, with boiled potatoes. Lord Emsworth received the information with a gratified nod. Good, plain English fare. How different, he was thinking, from the bad old era when his sister Constance had been the Fuhrer of Blanding's castle. Under her regime, dinner would have meant dressing and sitting down, probably with a lot of frightful guests, to a series of ghastly dishes with French names. And, added Beach, for he was a man who liked to be scrupulously accurate. Spinach. Oh, capital. And to follow? Roly-poly pudding, my lord. Uh, with plenty of jam, I hope. Yes, my lord. I instructed Mrs. Willoughby. Oh, uh, who is Mrs. Willoughby? The cook, my lord. I thought her name was Perkins. Uh, no, my lord, Willoughby. I instructed her to be careful that there was no stint. Oh, thank you, Bish. Unless there's lots of jam, roly-poly pudding isn't worth eating. All right. Bring it in when I ring, will you? Very good, my lord. Left alone, Lord Emsworth attacked his good, plain English fare with gusto, musing, as he did, on the stupendous improvement in conditions at the castle since his sister Constance had married that American fellow, James Shoemaker, and gone to live in New York. There was no danger of any of his other sisters taking her place. He was no longer on speaking terms with Hermione, and as for Dora, Charlotte and Julia, they never left London except to go to fashionable resorts on the Riviera. The peril of a visit from any of them was so remote that it could be dismissed. His brother Galahad had once said that it had been a mistake to have sisters and that they ought to have set their faces against it at the outset but almost as good as no sisters, were sisters who kept their distance. There was just one small, crumpled rose leaf. His younger son, Frederick, now employed in a New York firm which manufactured dog biscuits, had, most unnecessarily, sent this chap Chesney to him with a letter of introduction, and he'd had to ask him to stay. But he'd neutralised the man's menace by cleverly having all his meals in the library, and in between meals, keeping out of his way. 
He finished the roly-poly pudding to the last speck of jam and took his copy to the armchair in which...